In my last video, I walked through the steps for shaping and profiling. Today's segment focuses on turning a piece of gouged, shaped, and profiled cane into a mummy. Here are the materials needed for making a mummy. 100% cotton thread, a spool of 22 gauge wire, a Cornelison forming mandrel and pin set, an easel, a ruler, a container of water, garden shears, a pencil, a piece of gouged, shaped, and profiled cane, an X-Acto knife, and a pair of pliers with a cutter on the side. The wire and similar pliers are available through double reed purveyors such as Forrest's Music or Miller Marketing. I purchased the garden shears at Canadian Tire. LC Double Reeds in Jacksonville, Florida sells the Cornelison Forming Mandrel and Pin Set. This easel was made by B. Allen Mackey, Canadian log builder and father of solo bassoonist Nadina Mackey Jackson. Not pictured are needle-nosed pliers from Rona or Home Hardware and thick cotton string, which will be used later on. I can now take my dried gouged, shaped, and profiled cane, or GSP for short, and soak it for one hour. Next, I need to cut a piece of wire about four finger breadths long. This ensures that the wire will be fully able to wrap around the cane. For this step, I'll need the pliers with the cutter on the side and a spool of 22 gauge wire. 21 gauge is also acceptable, but 22 has a little bit more flexibility. After the cane has been soaking for an hour, it is now time to score it. I'll need an easel, a sharp X-Acto knife, and the piece of GSP. I'll take the tip of the X-Acto knife and press it into the cane at approximately just under where the first wire will go. It is a fine balance between making just a surface mark on the bark and actually going deep enough to create controlled lines for the cane to follow as it cracks during the forming process. There will be enough pressure that I can pass the blade through the length of the eventual tube without going all the way through the cane. Now I'll do the same thing to the other side. I like to aim for at least six score marks, but more is better. The reason for scoring is to crack the cane in a controlled way to minimize or eliminate cracking up the blade of the eventual reed as the tube is being formed. Now I'll mark the midpoint of the piece of GSP. The cane is 120 millimeters long, so the midpoint will be at 60 millimeters. The cane doesn't have to go back into the water at this point, but it may be a good idea to at least dip it before this step. I'm taking the piece of cane that has the midpoint mark and folding it over the ruler. I am now manipulating the blades with my thumb and index finger to line the collars up so that they match. Before I go any further, here is what the folded piece of GSP looks like now. In this picture, the collars are not lined up, with the right side being lower than the left. To clarify, the collar is the point where the bark meets the softer material of the blade. Using the technique I demonstrated in the previous clip, I will continue to adjust the blades so that they align by gently working the left blade down to meet the right blade's collar. You can see that both collars are now aligned. Now that the blades are aligned properly, I'll mark the fold over point with a pencil. Up to this point, I had been using the metric side of my ruler. I will now turn the ruler over to use imperial measurements. Since my ruler is 6 inches, I find it easiest to align the marked midpoint at 3 inches. I will then measure 2 and 5 sixteenths of an inch from the fold to one of the butt ends of the eventual reed, and mark this with a pencil on the bark. Now that this measurement is marked, I'm taking my pencil and extending that mark to the underside of the cane where I can see it. I'll take the garden shears to cut this to length. The reason for using garden shears is to follow the curvature of the cane. Next, I need to turn the GSP over and line up the sides before cutting the other end off.
Both halves of the GSP are now at 2 and 5 sixteenths of an inch from the foldover point to each end of the cane. While there is a school of thought that intentionally side-slipping reeds will cause them to right themselves during the forming process, my goal is to line up the halves of the reed as best as I can without side-slipping. On a blank, the distance from the fold to the middle of the first wire will be 1 and 5 sixteenths of an inch. Since this first wire will eventually be replaced, I am setting it only approximately where it will go. I'll take the forming mandrel with a pin already installed and insert it a few millimeters between the two halves of cane. This is to give me something to hold on to while I put the wire on without significantly distorting the opening of the eventual tube. I'm wrapping the right side of the wire over the left side, and then bringing the two ends around back towards me to make a cross. I'll take the pliers at the cross, pulling, releasing, and locking three times, or as many as necessary, keeping in mind that I want to close the gap. I'm lifting up the wire a little closer to where it would normally be on a blank. Now I can take the cane off the mandrel, unwrap it, and put it back in the water while I get ready for the next step. It's time to wrap the cane to prepare it for forming. I'll need a spool of cotton thread and the X-Acto knife, or a pair of scissors. I want to give myself enough to work with to start. First, I'm wrapping it loosely underneath the first wire down to the butt end of the eventual tube. Next, I will wrap it tightly between 9 to 12 times above the top of the first wire. This is to help mitigate cracking up the blade as the tube dries on the forming pin. I can reuse this segment of thread for future tubes until it starts to pull apart or lose strength, or about 7 times. Now I can cut off the end of the thread and drop the GSP in the water until the thread has soaked right through, which may be a minute or two. I'm taking the forming mandrel and inserting it into the tube. I am now using the needle nose pliers to push the tube straight down, being careful not to twist. There are two tick marks on the forming pin. The tube needs to go down to the second tick. Though this isn't pictured here, I can also rest the mandrel on my stomach to give myself some extra support to push against. It's better to avoid squeezing the tube too much at the second wire, whose middle is 5 sixteenths of an inch below the middle of the first wire, and definitely not higher than that. However, in the case of a stubborn tube, this maneuver may be helpful to get it all the way down to the second tick. I'll need to crimp the tube around the base once it's down far enough. As you can see, this takes some amount of patience. It is tempting to twist the tube to get it down to the second tick, but this increases the risk of side slipping. Now that the tube is formed, it's time to remove the pin with the Allen key and set it on the rack. Then I can replace it with a vacant pin. Ideally, the tubes would sit here for two weeks or longer. I find that a minimum of two days is acceptable, especially in the dry Alberta weather. Tune in next time to learn how to turn a tube into a blank.